Hello and welcome to a new video about hydraulics. This time we're going to talk about pressure accumulators. They are called pressure accumulators. But there might be several reasons why I want to build something like this in my hydraulic system. One thing is for energy storage. That I can put somewhere oil, then I can turn off the pumps and use this pressure accumulator as pressure source until it's empty and then I recharge it with the pumps. One possibility. Another possibility is to damp pressure peaks. Okay? Another possibility is to, to, to somehow compensate the, the heat uh, in the heating system at home we have such thing. So there are quite a lot of reasons, yeah? or as an emergency backup, yeah? if the pump is failing, that I can get my hydraulic system into a safe state, so as some sort of, of emergency pressure. Yeah. Yeah. How is such pressure accumulator working? Yeah? I show you. The simplest thing, or the very simple thing looks like this. Huh? There's a tank, pressure tank. However, this is formed, does not really matter. Huh? Below, there is oil. Huh? Oil can go in and out there. There's a connector. Huh? So here we have cut oil. And above this oil, there is gas, yeah? maybe air, yeah? or maybe, I call it hydraulic liquid here. And above there, there is maybe air or maybe gas, yeah? N2, yeah? this is gas. Air. And very often N2. Okay. So the gas is acting as a spring element. Yeah? I can compress the gas. Yeah? So if I pump in oil now yeah, or hydraulic liquid, this volume of hydraulic liquid will increase. Yeah? And the gas is, is accumulated, pressured, put under pressure. And I can use this gas bladder to press out the oil again. This is how all of, of the pressure accumulators are working. So there's usually nitrogen, sometimes air. This gas is pressurized. And it's even more pressurized if I put in oil. So this gas is acting as a damping element also. If there are pressure peaks, this gas will damp these pressure peaks. Because it's simply, I can simply compress it. At empty tank, this gas has a certain filling pressure, pre-filling pressure. Yeah, before I fill in oil, this gas is already under pressure. So here must be somewhere a valve where I can put in the gas. Okay? To a certain extent. That's it. Yeah. This is how pressure accumulators are working. Just with a gas bladder somewhere inside. Yeah? Gas bubble. And this gas bubble is acting as damping element. Such things where we just have the liquid and the gas yeah, and there is no physical barrier. Yeah, this can only be used below, below 60 bars. Because if we are above 60 bars, we really need to separate the liquid from the gas because the gas is getting dissolved in the liquid. We talked about this and then we have 
increased uh, chance of, of, of cavitation, of course. Uh, I really have to prevent this. Uh, and I really have to take care that the gas and the liquid is not mixing each other. Uh, just costs money also. Uh, not only the cavitation, but also if the gas is disappearing slowly over time, hey, I mean, I have to refill this. Uh, so this is why in higher pressure systems there is a separation between the gas phase and the, and the, and the liquid. Uh, one possibility is the bladder accumulator. Okay, bladder accumulator pretty much looks like this. Uh, so there is casing. And here I have a valve which can be opened or closed. Uh, so this is open and closed. And here, this is my connection to my oil. Uh, so here is, ooh, green. Here is my, my hydraulic liquid inside. Uh, and this volume here is usually filled with a gas bladder. Uh, so there is a, some bladder inside, which can extend or And there is also the valve for refilling this. Okay. So here again we have our nitrogen and here we have again our liquid. This is how this looks like. Okay. Uh, you know, this is not just like a balloon type, this is getting bigger and smaller, it's more like folding. Yeah? If I look from the top, yeah, it more looks like this, if it's really pressed together, or like this, if it's extended. Yeah? A little bit like a football, American football or something like this. Yeah? Or like this breathing things. Uh, this is more like this looks. Yeah? So I have a certain pre-filling pressure, I already told so, yeah? and I have a certain liquid pressure. And the ratio between the pre-filling pressure and the, the liquid, the maximum liquid pressure is at this type, this is the bladder, bladder accumulator, bladder. bladder accumulator. At this type, the pressure uh, is pressure ratio is 1 to 4. Yeah? So if there is one certain pressure pre-filling, then four times maximum pressure is the liquid, maximum liquid pressure. That's not too high. Yeah? It's not too high because simply this is very elastic and it can tear. Yeah? However, because it's very elastic, yeah, it is really, I can really take in or pour out a lot of oil, up to 120 liters per second is the exchange rate of the oil, that's very high. Yeah? So these bladder accumulators are usually small accumulators, usually for uh, small differences, in pressure differences. Yeah? However, we can really, really, really take a lot of oil in or out. Huh? So, next time of accumulator yeah, is the membrane. Huh? So, there is also a casing. Here's the connection. For, for the oil, yeah, for the liquid, and then I have, in between, I have an elastic membrane here inside. Yeah. On one side of the membrane, there is my gas, 
face again. The other side of the membrane, there is my liquid. So it's very similar. It looks very similar to the bladder accumulator. However, it's only a part of this is elastic. This means I have quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of it's one to six up to one to eight pressure ratio. Okay, so I can use simply higher pressure differences with my liquid. Uh, however, the flow rate is drastically decreased yeah, because it's simply not that elastic anymore. And here we can only take out around six liters per second. Uh, really less. This is this type uh, of accumulator. And last but not least, the piston type. Piston type looks like this. There is cylinder. Below I have the connector for my oil. Above again I have the valve for my my gas phase. Here is my liquid. Yeah. And now the separation between the liquid and the gas is done via a piston. There's a piston inside simply. Piston inside. There are some ceilings there. And the piston can go up and down. So below here, again, I have my liquid. And above here, I have my nitrogen. This is how a piston accumulator is working. Piston accumulator, there is no such thing. I can, it, there is a pre-filling pressure and there's a maximum liquid pressure. In worst case, book, I touch the top. There is, I cannot destroy anything. Easy. So there is not such ratio. Unlimited. The maximum speed of the, of the piston for max is around 3.5 meters per second. So this is somehow telling me how much liters per second I can get out, yeah? depending on the piston diameter. That's it. So this here is the piston, piston accumulator. This was a membrane accumulator. Okay? And this is how this is really working, yeah? how, how such things are working. Piston accumulators have another possibility. I can, here, I can put a rod, yeah? I can make a ceiling, and this rod might have notches at the side, yeah? or something like this, and I can switch a pump turning off and on. Yeah? Here the rod maybe have some switch and there is a limit switch. Yeah? And whenever the rod is coming up, it will touch this and I can turn off my pump automatically, for instance. Yeah? So piston accumulators are also widely used. Yeah? These are often used for storage, energy storage. And such things are usually used for pressure damping, not that much for energy storage. Yeah? Maybe to take a little bit away the peaks yeah? or emergency things yeah? that we, I can still switch a valve, yeah? then those things are used. For really storing energy, usually a piston accumulator or a low pressure system, just a simple thing is used. That's how how uh, accumulators work. Yeah. On the computer now, I show you a real life application of a piston accumulator.
follow me. So this is the situation of this, how this looks like there. Yeah? You remember the oil tank we last time talked about? This is this thing here. Yeah? Here there is the oil tank. Yeah? Now from the other side. Yeah? And I told you this filter has a small filter pump. Yeah? Here is the small filter pump. This is the piping here. It's going somewhere. Yeah? This here is just cooling water equipment. But now we want to talk about this thing here. This is the pressure accumulator. Yeah? And you see, more seems to be bigger. Yeah? Let's have a closer look. This is how this looks like. This is a piston accumulator. Here is the oil connection and above here is the gas connection. And in this cylinder the piston is gliding up and down. Okay? What are these things here? Those this is the nitrogen retreat area, let's call it. If the piston is going all the way up, then the gas is pushed back into these pressure tanks. So in these pressure tanks, only nitrogen is filled in. Okay? This is not the nitrogen. There, I need a certain amount of gas to have the damping. Yeah? And I cannot just put it on the top of the piston because then it would be huge. So I make some tanks close to the piston where I can shift the nitrogen and pressurize it there. Yeah? The nitrogen will then go back to the piston and press the piston down. Okay? This is how this looks like. Yeah? So there are pressure tanks next to the piston accumulator simply to store the nitrogen. And I already said something about filling. There is even written filling, how much filling we have. There is written at 293 Kelvin we need to have a pressure of 65 bar pre-filling. 65 bar pre-filling. And I somehow have to manage if I get delivered this usually 200 bar bottles of nitrogen that I can fill 65 bar in there. It's also not that easy. Somebody will show you if you really have this situation. Because I cannot just... I open, I open the bottle, the delivery bottle, let it pour in and then the pressure will be maybe... Because this is quite huge, yeah, huge area, so the pressure will drop to, I don't know, 10 bar. Then I close the, the, the delivery bottle. Then I will fill the next one, the pressure will only drop to 20 bar. And every new delivery bottle I will add, there will remain quite a lot of nitrogen in the delivery bottles. That's not it. Yeah? It is working a little bit different. Yeah? It is working with the help of the, of the pressure accumulator itself. Yeah? The piston can suck out the nitrogen from, from the bottle. Yeah. Yeah. So, even the filling, the pre-filling, free, free, you see, even the pre-filling pressure, if you think about it, it's not that easy. Yeah? As always, yeah? if we go into details, yeah. it's not that easy anymore. But from principle, I think it should be clear now how pressure accumulators are working and how they look like. Huh? This is an example of a piston accumulator. So that's it about the, the power part, uh, energy supply part. Next time we're going to talk about valves. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.